All right, it works. Oh, it's not a paperweight, thank goodness. But uh, I recently picked up uh, Bubble Bobble 2 at a garage sale, and so I'm going to play it for you. If you haven't watched the last results video, this, this kind of spoils what I found, so maybe maybe go check it out. I I had the whole the whole sale there, you know, um, I think it did one cut really, some blurring of faces, but it's there. Uh, yeah, so yeah, go check that out. And, and you know, this is, this is one of my holy grails, you know, I, I'd love to find a Vectrix and an Atari 5200, but in terms of games, this is my holy grail. You know, an object of my affection, but, uh, yeah, it's been having some really, really strange effect on my dreams. Like, I've been going to garage sales in my dreams and finding some rare games, obscure games, stuff that's valuable. Heck, <laughs> even games that don't exist, but, you know, when you're in your dream, you're, you, you're convinced of something is the truth. And I was looking at these games in my dream and, like, thinking that they were real, you know, that they existed in the real world. Um, like this last, last night I had this dream, I was at this garage sale and there was this box, um, as I, uh, I looked in, I saw like this, uh, a boom box in there, but it had like the colors of Super Nintendo and then it had like buttons on it and then it actually had the logo of Super Nintendo. And, um, it, to me I thought it might be something that I would see in, uh, the Nintendo Power Magazine, like Power Club. You collect like these stamps, um, and 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 the end of a Nintendo Power magazine, and you could send them in to get certain items in a catalog. You, you should check that out. It was something in the '90s, kids. Um, but yeah, anyways, I saw that, and then I uh, further down the drive there was a table that had a box on it that was it was like a shallow box. It wasn't like a a deep box. It was almost like a tray, really, and there was um, a bunch of Nintendo game, uh, Super Nintendo games, but Game Boy games as well, and um, yeah, I remember looking at the games. Some of them, like I said, don't, they didn't even exist, but the, you, I picked them up, and I was thinking, like, this is a rare game, and well, there, there was a boxed uh, Lufia there, and uh, what else was there? Just, you know, it was, it was crazy, you know, the, the kinds of stuff I was seeing at this garage sale. Just, and and it's been happening like that all week. Like, another dream I had, I found, like, a, a Turbo Duo and a PC Engine. And, you know, some of this stuff, I'm like, it's not my stuff that I really want, but I mean, I recognize it as being rare, valuable, collectible, whatever. And, uh, yeah, it's like... I don't know, my brain's still excited from Saturday. Uh, like, there's still aftershocks from... Like, almost like a bee sting, you know? Uh, but more pleasant, I guess? <laughs> uh, a lot more pleasant, actually. I hate, I hate being stung by bees, obviously. Most people do. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, why do I, I value this game so much? Why is it a... Uh, Holy Grail. It, it, I mean, it's a Holy Grail really for one reason. It's hard to find, but why is it a Holy Grail for me? Uh, well, first of all, I love uh, title games. And I love Bubble Bubble. Like, I, I like these games a lot. These kinds of single screen, uh, like you fight all the different enemies. And, you know, you clear all the different... Like, Rodland is one, Buster Brothers, um, Nightmare in the Darkness is a, is a really obscure one, but uh, Snow Brothers, stuff like that. I, I like those kinds of games, but but this, you know, Taito always seemed kind of crazy in the way they, they, they scored you or they gave you uh, power-ups, you know, all the different power-ups they give you. Uh... It, oh, come on. I just lost two hearts. <laughs> but yeah, it was just always so interesting when you're playing these games because you never really could 
tell what was going on what, or what was going to happen. You know, each each time you played, it was definitely uh, a unique experience. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Ugh. Got that guy. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, even in this game, they're like, I've had this game on the, uh, the Game Boy since it was, uh, contemporary, you know? Like, I got, uh, I think I got it from Funkland. But, but, uh, oh my god, I want to play with the gem. Gem, gem, gem. Gem, gem. Yes! <laughs> but yeah, I've had it since, I've had it on the Game Boy, and there was, like, these gems that you collect, and I think they give you, like, I think they give you, like, a special ending. And so, like, each time you played, or each time I played, I really wasn't sure whether I was gonna get, I was gonna get the, the right ending, or the best ending. So there's always, like, a reason for you to go back, you know? Reason for you to, not just score, I mean, score's a really big factor in the arcade, and even here, I guess, too, like, at home. I mean, it doesn't save it, which kind of sucks, but, but, you know, there's the score, and you get that, but... Am I like, fighting a tuna can? What the heck is this guy? Looks like a like a chicken of the sea can or something. Um. But yeah, that kind of like you never really know whether you're getting. There, there's there's always. Oh come on, an ending to the game that you're not getting, and that that was a big incentive for me to play this game over and over again. Come on. Scored! <laughs> I don't think I'm going to win this, though. He's like six points. Seven points. <sighs> but, you know, it's I guess it's not really random. It's more... It's really unpredictable, you know, the way they present all this information to you that just, you know, keeps you interested. Look at this grimace. <laughs> and I, I guess that's why I really like... You know, there's this cartoon, uh, Felix the Cat's cartoon in the 90s called Twisted Tales of Felix the Cat. And it was always so... The, the world he lived in was so odd and, and wild and just imaginative that each, each episode was just... You could watch each episode and not be bored, like, and they all stood alone. Like, you, there were some that, that you know, they were multiple parts, but for the most part, you could just watch each individual episode and and find something really to enjoy. And same thing goes for that Sonic uh, adventure, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, not the Sat AM one, but the. Uh, there was one that was like based in Mobius, and it, you know, it didn't really have any continuing storyline. It was just, you know, Sonic and his crazy adventures and all the characters he meets, and that to me is like Sonic the Hedgehog. But, uh, but yeah, either way, just that, that kind of unpredictable nature really draws me back. Oh God. <laughs> oh man. Um, draws me back to like these Taito arcade games, you know, that they give you that really that one more go kind of, there's that one more go kind of appeal, the, you'll, you have to constantly like adapt, because it's like, you know, you never know what you're going to get in these, these games, so. Yeah, and you always want to get further and further. There's like, I, I, there's usually, there's a hundred levels in the first bubble bobble, and there's probably a hundred here. Uh, keep this guy's butt. Uh, I could actually probably turn on my turbo. I have a, a Sansui Joy Car Triple S controller. I actually found that at a garage sale too. But, uh, it's my favorite controller. For the NES, at least. And, oh god, I'm gonna get hit. 
Come on, come on, come on. You turd. Ah. Uh, you know, one thing though I noticed is the... Compared to the first game, this is like... They don't give you as many power-ups. Like, things that actually improve your speed or how fast you fire bubbles or how far you fire bubbles. They, uh... They... Darn. They do... They still do give you a lot of points, though. Oh, come on! <laughs> I think I died like three times there. These stupid little purple helicopter buttheads are pissing me off! Alright, alright. We're gonna get these guys. But yeah, I have the, um... I have the Taito Legends... Uh, with the, ar you know, the arcade port. And I, that one, I haven't played the NES one in a while, and I don't think it does, but that one gives you a lot more power-ups and stuff, so, uh, like, it gives you them often, like crazy, like every single level you're getting a new power-up. So, yeah, this one doesn't give you as much. Well, I died. <laughs> there are a lot of nice improvements. Obviously, they give you... They give you... Uh, there's the improvements in the graphics. I mean, look at look at him go. He has, like, these, this nice, you know, jolly, jumpy... Um, in a good way, you know. It gives him character, animation, you know. Nothing like... It doesn't feel as stiff. The characters have a lot more character to them. They're they're more lively, and there are more enemies too. Like um, a lot of these guys, I don't recognize. Give you know they give you new moves. Uh, like this whole holding your breath thing. Instead of firing a bubble, you you hold the button and. You can start floating up into the air like this, and that's new. That wasn't in the first game, and you know, I the Game Boy game. I, I had the Game Boy game. Uh, like I said, I got it from Funkaland when it was new. You know, We're not new, but I got it from Funkaland when it was when it was a current game. Come on. Come on. You can get the gem, get the gem, get the gem. Yes. All right. And, um... Come on. Get out of the hole. But yeah, that's where I learned all the different moves and stuff and about those gems. Because I had the mail and everything for that one, but... Sadly, I didn't buy everything when I had the chance for the, uh... Nintendo, but... but... Yeah. When, when it comes to, like, Holy Grails, have any of you guys found yours? I mean... Probably most people have at least one thing that they'd really love to find. And, and not... Not just really because it's valuable, you know, like... Oh, that's worth $10,000, so I can make $10,000 on it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about things that you actually want. You know, you go out... You go out to garage sales or flea markets to find things you want. Uh, and so, have, have any of you found yours? Or at least one of yours? And if so, what is that, you know? And, and, and why? Why is... Why is it your holy grail? Why do you like it so much? Have you been searching for a long time? I, I I like to hear the I love hearing these stories. You know, what is that blinky thing there? Glitch. Probably not appearing in the video. There's like some blinky thing there. Now it's gone. Now it's back again. It's probably yeah. They can only draw so much on one line. So many characters. You know, this was a late release, so I mean, they mastered it pretty much in terms of the technology, the NES. What they could do with it. Owned. No! Had to get hit. I 
had to get hit. <sighs> yeah, this was, like, I think, like, 93 or 94, so... This is super late. I'm wondering now, though, if they ever release, like, a Bubble Ball Part 2 in the arcade. I know they have, I know they have a Bubble Ball 2. They actually have two Bubble Ball 2s. When Rainbow Islands was was considered the sequel to Bubble Bobble, and uh, eventually it became its, like, own thing. I mean, it's it, the same characters, but it's, in terms of its own thing, I mean, like, they have Rainbow Islands 1 and Rainbow Islands, you know, 3, you know. Uh, but, but yeah, Bubble Bobble 2 was Rainbow Islands, and then they made a Bubble Bobble 2 called Bubble Bobble Symphony in the arcade. But I don't, I don't think there was a, a Bubble Bobble Part 2 in the arcades, you know? It was only, it was only, um, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. This guy looks like an alien, like from the alien movies on a, on a motorbike. <laughs> uh... But yeah, I don't think there was a bubble. Come on, a bubble bobble two, a part two, in the arcades. I could be totally wrong. Um, and it's kind of odd, you know. It has the same story as bubble bobble part one. Your girlfriend gets stolen, you are kidnapped, and you go after her. Heck. Uh, seems like the best way to do it. But yeah, all these giant bosses. I haven't seen any new power-ups, though. Oh god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I was, you know, I, got, I was saying before about also the, uh, those, um, like, there were things that allowed you to skip levels, and I was always, like, wondering, like, should I, should I skip the level, or should I, should I not skip it? Be oh, man, I missed the hamburger. <laughs> Fighting the can of tuna again. Uh, uh, chicken of the sea. Actually, where's my password? The Game Boy gave me a password when I defeat a boss. Oh, come on. I'm gonna defeat you, can of tuna. Maybe I can only get passwords if I defeat this jerk. Nope. You're not gonna win. I am gonna win. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win, damn it. I suck at this. <laughs> so yeah, this is Bubble Bubble Part 2, and I obviously am gonna recommend it. For those of you who like Bubble Bubble games, Maybe you've only played the newer ones on the DS or GBA. Actually, I haven't. Um, these are pretty much the only two Bubble Bobble games in my universe. Bubble Bobble 1 and Bubble Bobble Part 2. Oh, gimme! No! Look at that grimace on his face. Ah, no bonus. So check it out! Bubble Bobble Part 2. Thank you.